Hey, a little bit of a different take and hold video for you today. I plan on doing a tips and tricks series because I've been getting a lot of comments and questions on Twitter, things like that, of best practice, uh, how can I get better at take and hold. Uh, so I thought I'd walk through what I go through whenever I play since I have going on 600 hours into this game. And uh, hopefully this will get everybody else a little bit better, uh, get you guys running up the high scoreboard so somebody can take this stupid cow wiener calico one hit limited ammo away from me. So before you even jump into take and hold, there are two things that I recommend at least spending some time on. Um, the first is, if especially if you're brand new to VR, get used to your controllers. Uh, whether it's a Rift, the old Vive ones, or an Index like I'm using, they're all very capable. Um, they all work just fine. Anton, the dev for this, spends a ton of time making sure that all control platforms are very customizable and just feel good when you're playing his game. Um, but you want to have a good understanding of how your controllers work with all of the weapons. So spend some time in the indoor range, the sampler platter, the uh, friendly 45 range, and just mess around with some guns and make sure you know generally what the controls are because it's a super important thing whenever you're taking out SOSIX. The second thing is to make sure you know what locomotion method you're comfortable with. H3VR has a ton of options. I personally use Arm Swinger. I've put a lot of time into VR though, so it's not for everybody. Teleport works just fine. There's a quick switch available on the back menu here. And on top of that, with all of the locomotion options, there are additional options in the options panel. So make sure you check those out. Um, there's a really nice arm swinger uh, overview by Bossom, I believe. I'll put the link in the description. So make sure you check that out. Um, and again, spend some time elsewhere in the game or just don't take it too seriously if you are in take and hold and use that as a chance to figure out what works best for you. Remember, if you start feeling sick whenever you're using a locomotion method, take the headset off and take a break. You don't want to push through that. That is going to ruin the rest of your day. Oh, and one other quick thing. I recommend the app Turn Signal so that whenever you're doing all your spins, checking all of your corners and uh, taking out the SOSIGs, you'll be able to untangle your cable. This has been a huge help for cable health and just not tripping over it. I have no pulley system above me. I've just been using that to keep my cable healthy and it's worked out great. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the options real quick. Again, if you're just getting started, I feel that the best places to be would be in some of the classic loadouts or the more moderns between Operator Ori, SOF Frankie, um, classic loadout, Lewis is a little bit older but still works. Um, all of those are really good. They give you a nice understandable set of weapons that don't have any kind of crazy controls. Um, the other one is Ricky Dicky Random. Ricky Random is really nice to help teach you all of the guns in the game because you can literally roll any of them. So I wouldn't expect to do so well if you pick Ricky, but if, you're, if you want to challenge yourself and learn some new weapon platforms, he's the one to go with. So yeah, we're gonna go with Operator Ori. We're gonna stay on five hold standards so that I'm not playing all evening. Uh, the equipment mode, definitely start in spawn lock so that you can understand. It just, it's a lot, it's a lot more forgiving. And uh, health mode, standard is okay. You can take a lot of hits. You're gonna take a lot of hits until you really understand the AI. If you have too many issues still, there are several other options available here. These just disable the leaderboard. You won't post a score past that point, so. That is there for you if you need it. The AI difficulty, I really, really think that the standard one isn't that bad. Again, I've been playing for a long time, but um, it's good to just learn how they act in that sense. So I would put that on standard. And radar detect, I feel personally that it is not worth having that on because it's more distracting to have to look down to that uh, rather than just listen to where they're coming from. So you can use that information the sounds that they make when they're, they're talking or they're walking into the doors where the SOSIGs are and it's pretty much easy from there. If you don't really have a good audio solution, you might want to look and putting the radar on, but otherwise they make a lot of noise so you could hear them coming from a mile away. And as for these bottom options, I'm going to leave those as is. The item spawner is available, but again, it disables the leaderboard. So if there's a specific gun that came out that week, something you want to try to get better at in a combat situation or learning the best way to reload it, uh, you can just do that real easily by selecting that and you'll have it right in that first hole when you spawn in. So we're just going to get going with where we're at. Well, my score is terrible here. 26th. Let's go. Uplink successful. Target system detected. Take it. So I'm just going to kind of talk while I play here. Health weenie, absolutely always take. We can check our health up there or the outside of the radar. 
For our melee weapon, I always suggest sling locking that, that is the touchpad or joystick pressed in while hovering over the quick belt slot that it's in so that you cannot drop it. I don't do this with my weapons typically because I don't find it as fun, but uh, if you're just starting out, I definitely recommend it because you're never going to lose that either into the abyss or in the middle of a gunfight. So our opening weapon, not terrible. Magfed pump shotgun, kind of weird, but fills the shotgun roll, which is really nice to have in every run. So we can see that we're already coming up on the first hold up here. We're going to have two enemies in the first hold, and then one to two at that blue supply point. And that's going to be it on the map for this opening bit. Stunned him. Ooh, we got those new shotgun sounds. Thanks, Anton. Terrible. So again, no patrols on the initial load in here. We're just going to have that one to two up at the other supply point we got to worry about. So we are now clear. For the supply point boxes, we want to break all of them. At least until we find out if there is a override token, found. Override token for us. We loaded here? We are. You can never get more than one, but you can still get health out of the remaining ones. How convenient was that? So, now we can assess whether or not we want to reroll our ammo. We have double O buck, which is really strong here. We could take slugs if we wanted. They just got buffed, but I'm not going to. I prefer the buck. And then we can decide if we want an actual weapon roll. So, we have a shotgun. That roll doesn't need filled anymore. What we're lacking right now is mag capacity and a fire rate, I'd say, as well. Pistol is going to fill that quite well, so I'm going to take the one-point pistol. Not the best, but at least we got one of the higher capacity ones. I'm not a fan of the deagles. They recoil a bit too much for me. So, but the reason that we want to have something that can fire fast and accurately is the nodes that will pop up once we start this. So, once I hit this, we're going to get some uh, square cloud looking bits. Those are going to be the possibilities of where the nodes will spawn. When those nodes spawn, they are your number one priority because the quicker you take them out, the higher your score is going to be. You still get points for killing Sosix, more if you shoot them in the head. But if you clear those nodes, you're going to have a higher score come the end. That's the biggest factor as far as I've become aware of. So. Before we get started too, we're going to assess where the hold is. If it's your first time, you'll kind of learn where the barriers are going to be right here. That door is going to be blocked off. We won't be able to pass this. And then anything past this door here, we will not be able to come past. We'll have Sosig spawning from there, from in that room, coming out here, and then back in that room. So we need to find a place to hold. My personal bit on this one is right here in the corner. I don't have to worry about what the cover is going to be like. But uh, man, that's just me. So you're going to kind of develop your favorite little spots on the way. So we'll get going. It's not too bad of a cover spawn. We can see pretty well down here. And we can see where those nodes are going to spawn. So we're not actually in a good spot here. We want to prioritize these. So now we can see the other two are going to be there. This is a nice spot because we have a shot on at least three of them. I'll talk more about the Sosig spawning next time because that's number two on the list. You want to survive, but you really want to get those nodes out. Easy peasy. Encryption neutralized. Hold successful. Data extracted. Three override tokens found. So we get more tokens Advanced to spend. The next system node. And take it. We get between two and three new supply points to check out and the next hold. Now from this point on, there are going to be patrols increasing in difficulty and amount and frequency uh, between each wave. So always, always, the best way to know where they're at is to listen. If you have an index, it's taken care of for you because the headset on this is fantastic. But otherwise, um, we can hear already. Group out here to our right. Always, and that goes for 
when they're holding as well. You can hear what door they're going to come out of. Did I miss one? I don't know if he died or not. You will know what door they're coming out of, which means you have the advantage. So always, always, always play around the sounds they make. They're very loud. Uh, we can check ammo again. It really isn't necessary. Again, I have the buck. We got flare. Uh, shotgun, not going to worry about, and I'm not going to bother re-rolling these just yet because we have one more supply point to check. It looks like we might have got either this room up here or yellow. No, it's not yellow basement. And we have this room on the other side of this wall for our hold. So again, we can always hear them. If you sit around and wait for a second, they'll usually talk. When they're inside here, they're not going to make as much noise as if they're moving around. So, but again, you're going to kind of learn where they spawn at. Override token found. To make it a little bit easier. Oh, we aggroed one of them. You can always know when they're coming after you. And if they do see you, fall back until they de-aggro. They'll fire a few times, they'll talk. Then they'll go back to a, a calm state. So, you don't want to peek out of those guys when they're aggroed because they will hit you. That is enough to ruin a one-hit run real quick. Got another group up here. So, I don't want a bolt action. I think we're a little bit past that already. Pistol, we have. Three-point SMG. Nice. We're filling a new roll. Not really the best roll that we got there, but it'll work. Melee, I'm good with. Put this on full and have some fun. See y'all tomorrow. Terrible, terrible. So I'm going to drop him back because I'm not going to be using that shotgun nearly as much. Keeping your belt organized and coming for me, this is terrible. This is like hypocritical because my belt is always a mess because I have too many guns on me. But make sure you know where your magazines are. Again, you want to be efficient during all of this because you have a lot of decisions to make real quick. So we hear, sounds like there. Terrible shooting. I am not the best with this weapon. Sounds like we're going to have the same spawn. They like to split up on that bit. So we'll have one come down the ladder. One in the front door. So the first one spawn, we can see one, two, three. Around between the second and third waves, usually. Taken care of. From that point on, it's at least the third wave. It's usually right after the third, but it can be fourth depending on how the RNG is feeling. Analyzing system. Oh, now we are getting three coming out of one door. So you'll notice that there are patterns. So now every time they come out, it's going to be three Sosigs from one door. Easy. And again, we're listening the whole time as to where they are or aren't coming from. The only one that's kind of weird is that spawn up there because, again, they like to split up and take the ladder plus this front door for some reason. Again, check our spawns, one, two, and they don't always spawn one, but you have an idea of where they can spawn. Two waves for the second hold. That's going to be it for there. Nice and easy. So I'm going to cut that one here just want to break this up a little bit to have some beginner, intermediate, and uh, maybe some advanced tutorials going on. But if there are other specific things that you want to know about, please let me know. And I will gladly try to put together a nice little uh, quick tutorial for you guys. I hope this is helpful to some people. And I really hope to see you guys on the leaderboards. Take it easy.